All right, just getting started. We're finishing up the frame stiffener here on the T-Rex 450L. I have been pulling a little bottle cap here like I talked about earlier. I was utilizing the bag, but I uh, wanted to show you just using a simple uh, water bottle cap. You can put your Loctite in there, get your screw, put a small amount on there, then you're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put these these, these pieces here that are for the frame stiffening, I'm going to go ahead and insert that in the frame. And that just will drop right in there. We'll line that up. The holes. These are the two and a half by six here. Just put those in to get that started. And we'll do the same on the other side here. Slide that in. I'm just going to put that in from the bottom here. And if you don't have this tray in place, as it shows in the manual, it would be even easier to do. So I put that on there, but uh, let's see if I have my needle nose. But if not, you just put it in there, take your time. It'll fit right in. That's why we show it in the manual there without this piece on there when you're installing these. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take two screws, pop these screws off real quick. So that way I have a clear shot at putting this piece in here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we can just place that piece right here, line it up. All right, let's prep one of the screws. Get a little Loctite here. Okay. Kind of use that to index it, get it started. All right, and then we'll get the other side. <clears throat> line that up. So as you can see, putting that brace, the motor mount block, it's a little easier without that battery latch in place, as the magnet suggests. Okay, so like that, tighten that up. That'll get the frame nice and rigid. Okay. And since we have this latch off, let's just look at the, if we place our wires here, let's take a look at that really quick. We'll put that on here and see what's the easiest way. Since we have the uh, battery latch off, I wanted to go ahead and hook up the motor wires here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to help myself with a pair of pliers to put these on because they're pretty snug so I'm just gonna put those on and I'm just using a pair of uh, needle nose and uh, pliers here One more. Okay. 
Okay. Some tools. Goes on really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and get the wire, get the latch. Get that so you can see that. The wire tucked under there, like so. And I go ahead and put those screws back on. But again, those those uh, cross brace for the uh, motor mount frame stiffener section there. It's a good idea to put those on prior to putting on the latch. And actually in the manual, it's suggested that way on page eight. So take a look at that when you're building yours. Wires are tucked underneath here. The motor's hooked up to the speed control at this point. And we're just, uh, Putting that uh, on there. All right, so there's a frame right now as it sits. And the next thing we need to do is pull out our servos. So let me get the electronics bag. I'm gonna pull these out. These are our cyclic servos. That are included with your kit. <clears throat> and these are the Align DS430M digital servos. So we'll go ahead and get these out. servos here and remember those small screws we had talked about there they are when we were putting the bearing blocks together we'll go ahead and put these in frame here again we'll get the lock tight little tab on there Let's go directly in to the uh, mounting block there. And right there. So this new design enables you to uh, access the servos conveniently the right right there on the outside of the frame again much like the 700 um, you have access to them so if you ever need to uh, do any uh, wrenching on your helicopter after the fact uh, it's pretty easy to get to an individual servo and uh, I think you'll find it a little easier to work on. The uh, Pro was a little different than this so th this is another uh, design feature of the uh, 450L so if you have wrenched on the Pro you'll, I think you'll really like that. Servo here. And this will be for our elevator. A lot easier to work on without the uh, main shaft and things in the way there. So that's just going to drop in right here. You just see, drop in, there's cavities there, it fits, and it basically locks into place. So all the uh, splines of the servo on the gears are all facing upwards towards the swash plate, just so you know. So just 
mount that on there and one more on the cyclic here And as far as our wiring and so forth, have these nice uh, injection bolted uh, inserts here, so it prevents the wires from getting chafed. And that's so that's already done for you. Pull your wires through, and we'll route that down towards the uh, 3GX. Those out of the way. So all the wires are internal there. And let's see what we can do with this one since we're looking at this. We're gonna pull the wiring for the uh, speed control towards the back. Just just take a look, see what options we have right now. Let's pull this back. Again, you want that above the tray. I'll go ahead and once I get the wire in here, I'll put the tray in there so make sure that we have clearance and I'll get the uh, battery tray in there so I know it's out of the out of the way okay so we just put that in there So we'll get some zip ties and things like that to secure this, but I just want to, again, feed this through, take a look at uh, what our options are. So that's what I'm doing now here. You might come up with your own way, but I'm just uh, checking it out. All right. Throttles on the left side, so you probably want to pull that over to the left and uh, watch out for the uh, locking pin there. But it's on the left side because that's where throttle is on the uh, 3GX. So I'd route to the left if you know, I was doing it. Get that throttle on the throttle wire to the left side of the frame, so that way it'll plug right into the. 3GX when you want to do that, so it'll plug right in. So there's the wire, it's all in pretty much inside the frame there, which is really nice. We have our uh, three cyclic servos. We'll go ahead and get the horns out and just apply the balls. This is uh, 450 HZ23. Go ahead and pull those out. All right, so we have our four balls there. All right, so on the uh, ball location, we're gonna use the inside ball hole, or the hole on the horn itself. So we're gonna use the inside hole. So go ahead and start that on the inside here. And what I'll do is get a dab of that Loctite, stick it on there, and then I'll get one of these nuts here. Back this out just a little bit, start it, tighten that up. Okay, set that aside. And so for the two uh, aileron and pitch, the ball is again on the inner hole, the inner part of the horn here. It's facing the inside, the ball. The uh, elevator rearmost servo there, it's uh, facing the outside. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second, but uh, yeah, it's on the outside. See. OK, 
Okay. All right. So these two are for our cyclics, and these again facing the inside. And on the elevator itself, they'll be facing the outside. But so you can see that balls are on the inside here. All right, elevator. This one will be on the outside. So we'll get this, and we'll put this on the outside. It'll be the inside hole on the horn itself, but the actual ball will face the top of the horn itself. Screw that down, and it'll lock tight. Back that off, and we'll tighten that. All right, so this is for our elevator. Again, uh, this is a lot easier to get to without the uh, main shaft, without the anti uh, anti phasing unit in installed. So that's why I'm able to get my fingers in here and uh, put those horns in place. Right now, we still haven't centered them up 90, uh, but you can do that prior if you want to. Set those up that way. Get them 90. Just gonna get my finger in there from the other side here. Find the spine, and then just push that on. Okay. Right now, we're just doing it. That's just a, a fit on those. Once we have the actual helicopter powered up, so we have it powered up there, so you can see that, we'll be able to uh, make the adjustments, get these servo horns 90 for setup, you know, get the swash leveler out, things like that. But for now, uh, this is just so we can see what's going on here. All right, and then as far as our tail, yeah, on the tail here, we're going to use the inner hole as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Thread that on the horn. And this will be for our rudder servo. It'll lock tight. That screw here. Loctite, nut, pull that on. You can see it's uh, mainly one uh, wrench we're using here for the most part on during the build, so it's pretty simple. All right, so there's that. We have the screws, these uh, metric screws for the uh, servos and the servo horn. Very small screws. I haven't put any Loctite or anything on them right now. I'm just gonna start them, just just for right now. Just put put them in place, so they're out of the way, and uh, that way I don't lose them. And again, uh, if you have a towel or you don't have a towel, make sure to get one. It, uh, whether you're working on a hard glass surface or wherever it is you're doing your assembly, it's good so that way if the screw does bounce on your work surface doesn't fly off the table on you. So just put that on there. They're just, they're just, you know, tightened on there a little bit, but I know they're coming back off because we're gonna make everything 90 on our servo horns before we do our uh, swash setup. So we wanna get those 90 zero degrees pitch on a radius center stick and then work from there. All right, this is the 450HT18. Open that up. This has already been pre-assembled. There are screws in the back here. We'll check that out. Again, that's the 450HT18. All right, and this is this has already been assembled. Oh, there's a screw right here. Let's get that out of there. Okay. 
Okay. Let me push those down. So we got our tail boom out in our hand. And when you're looking at the frame, your tail boom mount, again, it's pre assembled for you. Uh, so there's really no assembly required. This, there's bearings, uh, two uh, radial seal bearings inside of there, as well as one upper and lower here. And that's on your uh, tail drive gear assembly. So that's already done for you. All you need to do really is insert that into the frame. So this part will we'll open this up. You'll note that there's a hexagon shape in the injection molding to actually hold these pieces. But what I'm going to do is this part right here. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit right here. This is on the uh, back bearing block. Just so I can open up the frame just a little bit more to make it easier to fit this piece into the frame. So let's go ahead and do that. Pop that off. Okay. There we go. Lower frame's loose. It's not tight. Put that in place. Put that in place there. And okay. And it just presses in presses into these inserts that are impregnated into the carbon frame structure. And then we have this top plate here. We put that in. Okay. And there you have it with the carbon piece and toe there. We got our wiring, it's going down, it's going straight down, right now. And we'll check all our wiring and so forth as far as clearance from the uh, main gear here shortly. Right now we're just getting everything fitted. We'll go ahead and use these screws as they're provided here. And we'll get these mounted up. And also re-tighten those screws that I already had tightened. Put those into the frame. There's four screws mounting that uh, boom bracket. So we have that done. And the rearmost screws, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, not put Loctite on here because, you know, I'm still going to insert our boom and so forth. Just going to start the screws. Later on, we'll apply Loctite here. Put those screws on there. And let's go to this side. Make sure we have everything fitting. Okay. Again, on the uh, inner ones, we're, we're still putting the Loctite here. But as you can see, it's, it, I mean, it goes together really simple, really easy. And it's got a lot of great aesthetic as far as the look and how these uh, integrated uh, injection molded pieces have been included within the frame structure itself makes it really nice. So it's got a great look about it already. Just looking at the frame right now. It looks really nice. And uh, I'm looking forward to flying this. Let me uh, get a little bit more Loctite here in my cap. We have our anti-phasing unit right here. We'll be utilizing that shortly. We also have these two long screws. We want to make sure we go ahead and Put these on. 
now, even though there's no Loctite on them. We'll do that later once we have the uh, boom in place. Alright, that looks pretty nice right there. Installation of anti-rotation bracket. It's just known in your manual. I'm going to go ahead and install these small screws here that hold that in place. This is a 1.3 millimeter wrench from a line that I'm using. So if you have 1.5, that's not going to do it. You need a 1.3. Get that put in there. Leave a little bit out. Put Loctite on that. Same thing on this side. So you can see that. Leave it about an eighth of the thread out. And I'm going to Put a little dab of Loctite on your uh, canopy standoff here. Put that on. Again, just put a little bit of Loctite. And again, we'll get that started there. Okay, so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my servo going here. It's for the tail servo. I'm using the Align DS525 servo. The spline is going to be facing the tail of the helicopter. So you drop that in there like this. And again, that's facing the back end of the helicopter, this spline here. And then we have some uh, 2.6 washers with the uh, socket head button. These are like self-tapping type right here, screws. And we'll go ahead and use those on the tray. this on here. So that's how the servo is mounted, this tail unit here. Get your horn there, and that goes into the frame just like that. So there's the frame structure. Frame structure is 
As you see it there, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the main shaft. We'll go ahead and check that out. And I left that piece up when I was telling you about that long ball. Just to get that going. And we'll just put a rotor head on here just to get a look, see how it looks. Pop the ball in the swash. There's that. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's done. And as far as the frame assembly, we still have this gear right here, the main gear. We'll go ahead and really put the bolt through here. I'll pull the main shaft out. Stick that on through, put some Loctite on the nut here. Alright. Move that to the side there. Put the nut on. We'll screw that into position. Okay. So that's tightened up. I haven't tightened these uh, screws right here to the main shaft itself. We'll do that towards the end. Alright, that goes right through. Nice and easy. And let's check out the auto rotation hub. We'll line up the uh, bolt hole. So when you're looking at it and you see a sleeve, there's the white lower auto rotation gear. You want to make sure that that lines up so there's a clear hole straight through. And if you don't get it on your first try, just keep spinning it around and you'll get, you'll get it. You just go counterclockwise on that lower gear. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. We're not going to spin it too much because we want to check. The other thing we want to do is we want to check out our wiring. So I'm going to check that out. Get that in there. And also my motor because remember the motor's not fixed just yet as far as its position but the wiring we want to check out make sure we have clearance if not we're gonna we're gonna break out uh, some zip ties and things like that strap down the wire wiring I kept this loose so if I need to being that I'm looking at the wiring right now I'm gonna try and push this through there's a pocket right here I'm gonna push that through there and get that out of the way of the main gear. So I'm pulling that through there. If you can't get it through with your fingers, just get out some uh, hemostats or some needle nose pliers. That'll work. Pull that through. Pull that wire through there. And just pull that through. Alright. So I have those through there. They will need to be mounted on the side of the frame so they stay out of the way of the gear and the same goes for the throttle let me get this one like I said you want that on the left side looks to be like the way to go on the left and I'll also put that through that uh, cavity there pull that around and we'll see how that goes as far as clearing the main gear so we'll go ahead and insert the main gear again and check for the fit try from this side here and see how close or far the uh, wiring is okay. 
Okay. Let's see. Okay. That throttle wire looks pretty close right now, but I think if I put a zip tie on there, should have no problems. Pull that through. All right, so for the throttle, for that throttle wire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to drop it below where those three pass through, the three wires, the cyclics pass through. I'll leave those intact because those fit nicely there. But this throttle wire, I'm going to take it down on the bottom here, this wire here. I'm going to, so that way I can push it down below the main gear. It's out of the way. And the other wires, what I'll do is I'll zip tie them on the left side of the frame and they'll be out of the way of the gear train. So let's pop the head back in. And that fits like so. And the gears are there. Go ahead and spin this around a little bit. Okay, let's see if we got it this time. Looks like it. If it moves on you, just you can use a, your small wrench there. Get it in there. That small Allen in place. <clears throat> That's why you work on a towel here. It's screws drop off. Easy to find. Let's get that in there. Okay. So the wiring, I don't know if you can see that closely, but the wiring snakes right through here down on the frame and then cuts back through right here. And what we're going to do is we'll zip tie it. There's actually holes already drilled for you on the side of the frame there where you can zip tie that wire, get it up out of the way, route that directly into the 3GX right down here. Okay, so, so that'll go like that. We'll get the zip ties in there. That'll fix that up. So, let's see. As you can see, the frame is pretty much done here. The only thing we have left is to put this ball in, the long ball on back into the anti-rotation bracket. And we're going to make the links right here that go to the swash plate. This is in bag 450HZ22. So we'll go ahead and do that. The lengths on these ball lengths is approximately 19 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and build those real quick. There's three of them. We'll build those up. How you're holding these, you can use a pair of pliers or needle nose to do so. Start with one side and we'll start the other here. And as you can see, all the electronics are there ready to go. All we need to do now is the tail section. So let me uh, see how far we need to go. Ball to ball, we want to be at, excuse me, 32.5 millimeters ball to ball. And on the actual, or the rod, is 19 millimeters. So it's 32 and a half approximately, center to center here. Still got a little ways to go. We'll get one that's 
pretty close and then we'll copy that on the rest of our links. So let me go ahead and get one close here. Okay. At 33, let's go one more turn. And that should get us right in that uh, zone that we want to be in. Go out one half. Let's see. And half might actually be what we want anyway, but let me check. Yeah, we want the uh, A on the inside to be facing the servo and then out on top where the swash is, you want the A facing out. Also want to point out on the frame here while you're looking at this. I went ahead and put the zip ties in place for my wiring on the uh, from the speed controller down right here. Went down through the frame, down underneath the gear. I have these zip ties. I left them so you can kind of see those are they're there, so you can see. And then the wiring for the cyclic servos is pulled tight right around the back. We've already done the holes for you here. It's in the design. Makes it nice and easy to tighten up the the wire. And, get it away from your a gear train. So as you see it right there, that's that's pretty much done. We're just making these links up here. Just made the first one, we're gonna make another. And once we do that, apply the tail servo and you know go through the uh, tail box, which is pre-assembled, but we're gonna go through, build that up, and uh, we're pretty much done with the assembly. The rest of it will be a matter of setup and uh, dialing in our radio gear. And the flight reports that I've heard from various pilots has been outstanding, the, the flight reports. So I think uh, you'll find it to be an excellent flyer, lots of power, and a lot of fun to fly. And one more of the ball linkage set up here. One more time. Just hold the rod. Ball link here. It started. This side started here. Take a look. Still a little ways out. And if one side's going over too far, just get yourself some needle nose. You can hold on to that. If it's spinning a little bit, just turn it side. Still too long, so we need to go in a little further. And let's see what we have here. What we want to do is turn this 90 degrees, because that will go onto the swash here. This long ball will go through like this. We'll go ahead and pop this on. Let me pop this on for you. We'll pop this in. And then, now that we have that ball popped on, now we can put this on the swash plate and onto the ball link of the servo. Again, ace facing out. And put a little Loctite back on this, put this on the swash, and we'll be good. So let's go ahead and pull that in the frame. Have that link on there. Put this on. And we'll get that started. There we go. Go ahead and tighten this down. And now all you have to do is put the balls, ball links I should say, on the swash plate here. We'll snap those on, on both sides. A is facing out. There we go. And on the inside, the A will be facing the frame of the helicopter on the uh, servo horn on the aileron pitch servos. Let me go ahead and do that. 
double check. If it's not, just make sure that it is twisted out, twist it in, pop that on there. And then when we're doing our radio setup, we can always make adjustments as needed there so that everything's 90 and the swash is level. I'll pop this in on the inside here. Probably use my Allen wrench, slide that in to help me pop that on. I'm going to use the needle nose then. So there we go. Pop that in. We want a swash level. We want our servos 90. I'll get a swash level tool out for that process. Looks like this. It's a swash level tool. We'll use that. What we'll have to do is we'll pop the rotor head. That's why I haven't tightened these bolts down here on the head. These two bolts that cinch the main shaft. Haven't tightened those. We'll pop off the two pitch link arms. Put this down when we have the servos all turned on, the whole system on, and then we'll be ready to go. There's the frame. Our wires are secure now. We can easily put this tail servo in. So I want to go ahead and matching up those holes. Now that the wires are in place and secure, we can easily mount the tail servo. So I'll go ahead and do that, and that will finish the frame section here. So let me go ahead and put that, those screws in there so you can see that. Put those screws in there. And once we have these screws, again, we've uh, finished the frame assembly. So let me go ahead and... Alright, so there it is, all the electronics, rotor head, main gear assembly, you have your motor, speed control, everything's mounted. All we need to do now is the tail assembly for the actual assembly of the helicopter, then after that we can get into the programming of your helicopter and getting it ready for flight. Again, this finishes the mainframe section of the T-Rex 450L Dominator Series. My name is Jeff Fassbinder with a line, and please watch for our other videos. There will be a second video for the tail section, so make sure you look for that. My name is Jeff Fassbinder. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, feel free to email me at jeff at alignrcusa.com or visit www.align.com.tw. Thanks for watching.